Hey guys, Harry here, back again with another Rit Lane vlog. Um, it's part four on the garage with the big pillars. Um, that was a name I came up for this video. I should have really named it Garage with Corbels because that's what it ended up having. Um, we ended up taking this garage all the way to wall plate height and then I took it one course higher on the gables just because I could reach it. And I put the corbels on from the back, lintel on, bricks over the lintel to uh, carry the wall plate and it was all, do all done. Um, block pillars and all. So uh, this is day three on the garage, I think. I think this is day three. Uh, still from what same as last video. Um, obviously we worked the Saturday and then we worked the Monday. And then this is footage from the Tuesday where we lost half a day with no 40 driver. So this is why we were building. I was pretty steady today and I thought it was a good time to teach Jamie how to spread. So I talked about that last video, uh, that last uh, video about spreading, um, but I don't think I went into much detail as like sort of how, <coughs> how, you know, to teach someone to spread. So obviously I was just, I'm teaching Jamie just how I want him to lay the spread depending on the brick type. But I've been varying up um, the ways I lay bricks. So when Jamie's either watching me or, you know, he's jointing up and I'm just like passively watching and can see different ways I lay the brick. Um, I was using my old style today where I was like putting the joint on the front of a brick, on the front of the brick. And that's sort of a way that I've laid bricks for the last, you know, like eight, nine years. Uh, I've only, re well, 10 years plus, you know, I've only recently gone to pick and dip in the last, you know, six months since starting the YouTube channel. So that's sort of how little time I've really been using the pick and dip and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it has its merits uh, laying traditional. I've been doing extensive traditional work over the last, you know, good good week, at, well, a good week or two even now. I've been doing a lot more traditional for the past probably month. And it definitely has its carryover effects. You know, the, you know, one style laying bricks does carry over to another. You know, if you're fast at pick and dip, you're going to get faster traditional. That's one thing I've learned. And then vice versa, the faster you get traditional, um, you know, the, the potentially faster you be can become doing pick and dip, but obviously the pick and dip's more, it's a very foreign movement compared to traditional. There's different ways to lay traditional that can be faster. I'm not a big fan of putting your joint on the back side of the brick and then laying it. Um, I find that's quite awkward to work, talk on your elbows, you know, it sort of sends your elbows into a weird position, your wrists. So I'm a big fan of either doing the front and back tip, you know, or the front tip, um, while the brick's on the wall, or I'm a big fan of either putting the joint on the front of the brick, as you'll see me do right here, which, you know, I was laying majority of the time like this, just because uh, he was doing the spread, and I was obviously having to put extra mortar on the perps to make them like 20 mil. There were all these perps for 20 mil on the back. Um, actually, when I completed the front with a lint on uh, today, which because I'm recording this voice over on the Friday, but you're what you're looking at. Tuesday's, Tuesday's footage today um, I actually got an extra half a brick in the front uh, obviously over the lintel obviously you'll never see the bond because it's completely different to the back and it's only you know in the roof space basically but you know you can you can see that's how much of um, how much out this bond is so it was at least half a brick on the back and I tell you what you could have probably got another four brick in the gables in each gable um, easily you know so that's what i was working with on this garage it slowed things down probably quite a bit um but it's just what it was you know so i got a few comments last video saying you know you know we'd highlight this to you know management and then knock down the footing and rebuild it and the only reason i didn't do that is because it was my last uh job for this subby uh i've been working same subby for three years and uh it's been good it's been a stepping stone really from me sort of sacking in working in gangs to working one-on-one -on -one. and then the prices have done a major shift since I started um, with the old man you know um, we were on about 500 a thousand for the last probably two and a half years and then obviously the prices sort of were a bit lower probably prior to three years ago there were I was getting about 370 350 on some jobs 340 it was like sort of what I was getting when I first went one-on-one -on -one. and then um, you know it, you know it creeped it crept up to 400 and I managed to get with this subby when it was 500 so a bit of a turning point and then it's basically been 
are the same really for the last two and a half years and I we were running sort of long work so that's really the reason why I was jumping you guys don't see this on YouTube but I was jumping to different sites probably <coughs> like I was doing it like three different sites a week some weeks so it was getting to a point where because I had Jamie on board you know we weren't having enough work every drop to cover us both because we've gone I've gone from sort of you know having a sort of total wage bill of you know in the region of like 12 to 1300 to uh, a total wage bill of like 80, 1800 to 2000 depending on you know um, how many people we have with us uh, whether it's the old man and Jamie or just me and Jamie um, so uh, it's a lot more work we're getting through like this garage we, we could have done it in like four days four and a half days but it took us like five and a half um, obviously we could have done it in four days easy uh, with if we had a dedicated you know um, forks but we were just getting lifts off another job so um, that's the only reason it slowed us down on this day, on this uh, build. But, you know, all the way to wall plate, cables up, uh, cobbles on, you know. Um, basically, you know, getting through, I think we laid, I think we laid 2,100 bricks this week. And then plus tons and tons of lost time. Uh, bit of, did, we did a customer care job. We also did the cobbles, all bought pillars, trestled it ourselves, all that sort of stuff. So they're all extras. Um, but yeah, I was basically just get, trying to get this job finished because I wanted to just, you know, hit program, hit, you know, target and program for the last, my last job at least. And, you know, you leave on good terms, you know what I mean? That was the only reason I was doing this. And then, um, obviously like last video, uh, last few videos I was talking about, you know, trying to get in houses and they just didn't have enough, uh, they hadn't got enough in front, they didn't have enough work for, uh, basically the additional sort of workload I, uh. I've been, you know, outputting, I'm needing, needing the additional work, obviously, with, you know, having an extra man now, so there's going to be my dad working, like, two days a week, Jamie with me, five, uh, as a sort of improver slash labourer slash apprentice, because a lot of the times now, he's just, like, dedicated to, we're getting, you can get in front that easy, um, especially with the old man, you know, will be, like, forgot he'll be just loading out steady way, and he'll be doing either, like, two days, three and a half days depending on how it suits him and what work we've got in front of us so hopefully we'll have enough on the next site i've checked it out um you know the square boxy houses no detail really um similar house style to uh, the ones that derby brickwork uh, uh derby brickwork if you've seen them on youtube they build the van houses we're working on a van site same houses Damp trays, you know. If you guys want to know how to keep your damp trays clean, watch a vamp, uh, watch um, Derby Brickwork. They do some really good stuff, you know. They're a really underrated channel. I know they don't do any like proper voiceover videos or vlogs or anything like that, but some of their short videos, you know, you'll learn a lot. I've learned a lot by watching those guys, um, you know, those guys, you know, work. And they, they, they do pick and dip. They're all like a team, really high efficiency. You know, staple gun on the damp, which I'm still quite... You know, I'm a quit. I'm uh, I'm still not sure on you know the staple gun piercing the radon barrier. You know, is it like basically, um, basically is it obsolete? Is it making the damp obsolete if you're doing that? So, seeing them doing stuff like that, but I'll be uh, I'll be leaving blocks out on my uh, on my gables and stuff, and a couple of bricks out on the gable to you know I need to clean damps. I've seen uh, from what I could see when I when I was just looking through the fence. Because I wanted to check out the job, make sure it was decent. Um, gangs have been leaving Hessian in the cavity. Uh, I will not be doing that. I've done that before, and it is an absolute time killer. Putting Hessian in your cavity and then pulling it out and then putting it back in, you know, absolutely kills your time. And if you forget to take it out one day, Jesus Christ Almighty, you know, you'll have you'll, you'll be hooking that to the forklift, uh, and then your rope will snap and. You know, don't put Hessian in your cavities. It does not help them get keep stay clean. Just put block coring holes and brick coring holes. So if you want to put two or three bricks down on your gable, two or three blocks down on your gable, your corners out, leave your reveal blocks open. So put a normal block instead of a reveal block. You know, leave your thermobate out, you know, if you're doing that to clean the returns and stuff. There's no need for all this Hessian malarkey. I've seen it happen before. Seeing gangs use it, they just don't know. They don't, just don't know a faster way of doing it. And, you know, leaving blocks out allows you to easily clean your cavities. And, you know, if you're on higher lifts, where you've got, you know, like damp trays over your, over soldiers and stuff, 
you know, you can leave, you can either leave a block out, which isn't really ideal because it's right at awkward height, but, you know, leaving bricks out over that, you know, is, you know, is one thing that people do. Um, but main thing is, you know, try keep them clean by putting a lot in your cavity and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm a bit bummed that they have got damp trays on these. Um, it seems a common place now, damp trays are like what all jobs are using, but, you know, got the old man, that's going to be his primary job, cleaning them out every two days, uh, and we'll give him a clean if we ever lose time with forks and stuff, so uh, I'll let you guys know how that goes, but um, on this video, uh, it's just us taking up this uh, big rack back, I'll probably do a garage like this again, it was quite actually quite fast, um, building the back, and then like building the front pillar, the back, and the gable, and then the front pillar again, it was really quick. I got the front pillar up in like two hours on this this last one. And the rest of the gable is pretty quick. Um, I find splitting, you know, splitting stuff up into big corners really helps, especially pulling big lengths with a line. Um, it just helped cut down on pointing, to be honest, because if we had not, if we didn't done it the opposite way like I was gonna do, where I was gonna do the two pillar rack backs, that gable, then the other gable in the back, there would have been a lot of pointing. So this sort of cut out a bit, quite a bit of pointing for us both. Um, Cause Jamie was like getting a good head start on pointing before me, but obviously he's nowhere near as fast. So I was just blitzing through it and then giving him a hand. And then we went back to, you know, walling, spreading, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I've had comments, you know, saying that, you know, there's, oh, he's putting old mortar on top of good mortar and stuff like that. Um, as a bricklayer, you know, I've said multiple times in videos that I, <coughs> I do the silos, I make sure the motor comes just how I want it. Obviously, if we're, if we're using ready mix, like on um, on some sites, you know, that use ready mix, I think this site next time I'm going to is ready mix from what I could see. Um, you have, you know, as pros and cons. Uh, you know, number one con, it can get stiff, so you're doing a lot of knocking up a lot of the time if you're using all ready mix that's, you know, aren't got a good enough retardering. And then, you know, uh, cons, you know, obviously again, it can come too wet. Uh, but the pros, it has a lot of big pros. Normally, ready mix is quite easy to knock up. And um, two, obviously, you can get it, you can have it from the night before. So, this is why I propose for anyone working on sites where they have ready mix, get there early and start laying. Do you know what I mean? If you get a tub the night before, get there early and start laying. You know, even if you know you'd normally get there at like eight o'clock, like I used to, or you go and get there at half seven. Get there at fucking get there at seven if the site whenever the site opens up you get there and start laying because it's the only time you'll get to get like a head start on the day. Um, I've never been a fan of starting that early, but with the ready mix right there, it is so beneficial because you don't know when the ready mix is going to run out in a day and you're going to either going to be waiting for a delivery because it's always the case. You know, if you're working on a site ready mix, there was always a gang flying through it and then taking everyone else's tubs. Uh, so if you know you seg if you're like sort of dedicated two tubs per gang or three or four tubs per gang, you know there's sometimes the gangs using more than others. If one's on block work, one's on brick work, the other one will be creaming through all the mortar. So you know get there early, get your tub, and once you you know you're getting halfway through, get another tub. Make sure you've got enough for the day, and then and at the end of the day, if there's any left, try get one for the for the uh, following morning because that's where you're going to make some really good money. I've always. Um, done that when I've been one ready mix and I've earned some really good money by just getting there, getting organized and getting the gear there a day before I actually need it, you know. So you can start in the morning and you can be through a tub by, you know, nine o'clock, 9.30, easily, you know. Because a lot of ready mix tubs are a bit smaller as well. So we were brimming these big black tubs and we were getting through these in like two and a half hours. So I reckon, you know, a ready mix tub will be through in like two hours, probably less. Jamie's spreading so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some of the what I'm gonna be how I go about building houses it will come down to the fact of how management want it doing um, some sites prefer you to do what work first uh, some sites you know can say yeah, you can do what you can do brick work first you can do any you want um, a lot of the time it, they want to see that tray coming out of your what work and that's the reason why they don't like you to do it the opposite way around it's not nice you know it isn't I'd prefer to do brick work but I will have to show, show uh, you know, show that I'll do what they'll say in a sense. This is, you know, my first week. So um, I'll probably not be recording for the first couple of days. I'll probably try to do a little bit with a head cam. Um, I've got a new helmet 
a head mount sort of thing with I can put around my helmet so I'm going to clip off my old mount that's pretty much coming loose again anyway try to find a different way to mount the camera and I'll just be doing you know a bit of selective recording because I'm not sure if they you know they'll like you like me recording I don't want to be coming get into a changy situation where you know I'm basically banned from recording on site so I'll be doing a little bit of sly recording just you know a few minutes here a few minutes there throughout the day when people are on snap and stuff so it's uh you know just making sure management don't fucking call me and i want to just get used to the job as well for a day or two so i might even do a bit of you know third person recording with the gopro to just uh get a little bit more you know different angle to it i won't always be using head cam um that's probably what i'm going to do to be honest to start with just put put the little gopro camera um I might take, I might just put it on a little, just take this, take the case off and just sit it, you know, on the, on the, on a stack of bricks and just record like that. Um, yeah, that's, and you guys can see basically sort of what I'm doing on the third person. So that's the, that's more or less the plan. So yeah. Um, but yeah, in this video, obviously I was varying it up between pick and dip and, you know, obviously traditional but i like to say that pick and dip is very fast when you're reaching you know it's one of my favorite ways to lay bricks if you're reaching um i did it up these gables when i trestled it you know massive massive advantages really like um i really like you know the feel of it i feel like you have more time to maneuver your brick how you want get it to the line correctly you know check it um, I find with traditional, you just don't have that time when you're pressing the brick. You can, you know, you can easily tweak it a little bit more with pick and dip. I find so. Anyway, guys, it's Friday night. I'm gonna stop yabbering on about brick work and hope you guys enjoy the rain, remainder of the video. I'm gonna put a bit of music on, and um, I will see you at the weekend with another video.
Thank you.